G'day everyone, Matt Elder of MattElder.com here and today we're going to review the preview products for the first wave of LEGO Dots. We got to see some early product while we were working on the House of Dots promo house for the product launch. Click here to check out the exclusive behind the scenes video of the House of Dots. Please visit MattElder.com and subscribe so you can always be kept in the loop with new videos and exclusive content regardless of any YouTube algorithm changes. So first up, what is LEGO Dots? LEGO Dots treats objects such as jewelry stands, bracelets, pencil holders, etc. as blank canvases to apply LEGO Dots slash tiles to. The product is more geared towards those who might struggle with complex LEGO models and instructions. LEGO Dots are flat one by one tiles, rounded circles, quarter pizzas and teeth Lego pieces in an array of existing colors and new printed pieces. The first wave is going to consist of bracelets in five colors, three animals, a jewelry holder, a booster pack and a pineapple slash watermelon pencil holder. Each set is apparently going to be priced under 20 bucks, which seems to be a reasonable price point. Let's start with the bracelets. Here is the black band that we got to play with. Apparently they come in four other colors, possibly being teal, dark pink, blue, and medium purple. The bracelets are about 20 centimeters or eight inches long and designed for a six to 12 year old market. So it was a really tight fit on my wrist with a circumference of 18 centimeters or seven inches. They are made from what felt like a really sturdy rubber or plastic that was really quite flexible. It has two rows of 14 studs in each row that enable you to decorate with Lego tiles and create patterns. Initially I did a checkerboard dark pink and turquoise pattern. I generally refer to the brick link color names as that's what I'm most familiar with sourcing colors in, which will vary slightly from the official Lego color names. As you'd expect with Lego, the clutch power was quite good, even when the band was curled up into the bracelet shape. Here you can see a variety of patterns I was playing around with, so really only limited to your imagination and of course the pieces at hand. On this band, I tried to place one of each shape and color type that we had access to. I'm not super geeky when it comes to knowing what the new elements are available for the first time in certain colors. From the way the others were speaking, there are some new combinations here. For reference, this is Vibrant Coral, so you'll probably be able to work it out, or a website like newelementary.com will surely have the full details. The LEGO designers are excited to see how these bracelets might get used in the wild. The obvious one is to daisy chain several of them together to create belts. They are flexible enough to stick them onto surfaces and run around corners. I'm sure this will be appealing for those purists who don't want to use other flexible tape-like strips others produce for construction toys. For mine though, I think it will be interesting to see if the great ball contraption GBC community picked these up. I see a lot of potential this way. Being flexible like they are, having several in parallel you could possibly use in a trampoline like manner or in steppers or new models these bracelets would lend themselves towards. It could also be a way to test wearable fashion segment to see if there's any further interest in that direction. Next up is a three pack of animals in a pastel palette, a cat, a dog and a llama. I've part recreated one here, but basically it's a cube with four by four surfaces where tiles can be applied. This isn't the product, just a bad mock-up to give an idea of what it is. The eyes seem to be a new printed piece. There was also a piece on the back that would also let you support something like a small photograph. The tops also easily opened to allow kids to store secrets. For any parents out there, you know how kids love to hide things and have their own little secrets. So I think LEGO's market research is going to be spot on with this. Next up is the watermelon and pineapple. Again, this is a reconstruction mock-up of what I can remember of it not the actual product. It is a rectangular cube-like structure and from memory it was six studs wide on each side and maybe 10 or 12 studs high. The top of the pineapple I think had a pirate's wheel printed in green, possibly a new combination, with leaves hooked off the top of it. The color scheme was designated as Hawaiian colors with very saturated vibrant colors. I think the top may have also come off so you could put pencils and other secrets in it. Last up was the jewelry holder. This is my bad drawing of what I could remember of it, again just to give an indication of it. The top had two heart shaped plates, which may have also been a new piece. There are four pegs to hold jewellery on. The base had quarter 4x4 four four round pieces that may have been in a new colour combination with silver quarter curved tiles on top. Also a possible new combination. Apparently, 
Prototype models are heated to simulate 20 years on a windowsill in direct sunlight. If pieces fall off, then the design must be altered so that doesn't happen. As these were advanced preview items, they came in bubble wrap, so there are no boxes, packets or instructions. Instructions are also going to be different and more in a poster format. There is a conscious effort to get away from long, complex instruction books, which this target market doesn't get past and give up on. Apparently these posters will have more ideas than formal instructions. Given the decorative nature of this product, that would make a lot more sense. I'm thinking like the old early Technic where you'd have instructions for a number of models than single images of other models that could also be built. Additional parts per set were in Ziploc bags. These did seem to have a really good number of alternative parts to be able to decorate with. This was always going to be a concern as if you didn't have enough additional parts slash tiles away from the main design, it might not work too well as there wouldn't really be alternatives to encourage further designs and exploration, which would naturally shorten the product, play life and ultimate success. We didn't see the booster pack, so I have no idea how many pieces and combinations are within them. Could be a great way to get tiles for mosaics, which historically can be a pain. See here for our video on how to create a Lego mosaic from a photograph. It isn't expressly targeted as quote, a girl's product, but would probably have a natural tendency to end up here. I'm glad Lego have used very gender neutral palettes, i.e. it isn't dominated by pinks and purples. They are just really good solid palettes that color wise work harmoniously within themselves. Even the animal pack ends up with its own unique charm, heavily influenced by the pastel palette. Strikes me as LEGO trying to expand into markets that might not traditionally carry LEGO. The parallels to LEGO architecture series seem very common in ending up in gift shops, tourist spots, etc. The types of stores they are usually not in. If they get the tile count right, with a good variety of colors, don't see why it wouldn't be picked up by other non-traditional customers such as interior designers and the like. From LEGO's point of view, it's also a bit of a safe product. Apart from a small number of pieces, they don't have to create a large number of new molds. They can also do an array of existing molds in color combinations that haven't existed before, but is already part of the LEGO palette. Hopefully that makes sense. Thus can also appeal to the existing customer base if they want to get certain parts in certain new color combinations. They also aren't having to invest heavily in creating character stories and surrounding media like Hidden Side or Ninjago. There isn't the licensing fees associated with intellectual properties like Star Wars, Marvel, DC or Harry Potter. It will be interesting to see how customers react. I've been around it for a little bit now so possibly lost a little bit of objectivity. At least there will be some new elements available. At first I didn't think I was really in the target market but we'll be picking some up at some stage. Thanks for watching. Check out our other videos, particularly the exclusive behind the scenes video from the House of Dots construction promotion that was done for this product launch. Please visit MadElder.com and subscribe so you can always be kept in the loop with new videos and exclusive content regardless of any YouTube algorithm changes. Until next time when we talk about all things LEGO.